Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got a brand new installment of This Week in EDM, where we go over, well, songs that came out this week in EDM. This past week in EDM, we've got 28 songs I wanted to talk about. I would say overall a pretty underwhelming week, but let's hop into it with the bad category. As always, this is just my opinion. Do not take it as gospel truth. Um, we've got Dimitri Vegas, Steve Aoki, and Sound of Legend, and Anna Lee, I should say, uh, Anna Lee, with two times. Um, yeah, this is kind of just a flat song that does absolutely nothing. Uh, no tonal variation, nothing interesting, no real variety and production elements, just boring and unnecessary is this tune. And then we got laid back Luke and Chris Lorenzo with Break the House Down, a linear tech house tune with a silly melody and a lack of anything really interesting on the bass line side of things. Um, it's a track that has very little to offer and even less to latch on to. It gets a little bit more interesting in the last 30 seconds, but um, we needed that extra element of the track like way sooner. It almost sounds like it's a mistake that they had it like turned off almost in the DAW for the first half or first two thirds of the song. It's, it's, it's weird. I don't really get it. It feels like a mistake. Then we got Jaden Bosgen and David Guetta with Let's Go. I don't really get the appeal of the kind of crass club focused language and story that there's this like kind of couple that's trying to get into the show and getting denied by the bouncer. And I just doesn't really resonate with me. Uh, and uh, yeah, it kind of takes me out of the song rather than bringing me in with the story. Um, plus the kind of backing production isn't all that interesting either. So didn't really care for that one. Then we got Sofa Sound with Use, a very kind of wonky drum and bass tune that leans heavily into hyperpop moments here and there. The production is intentionally very sporadic and all over the place, yet it still feels disjointed and unintentional at times. Uh, just one that I don't think really worked for me, sadly. There's a lot of Sofa Sound I really enjoyed, but this one felt a little too odd for me. But then we got Tony Romero with Dance Naked, uh, incredibly boring tech house tune that tries to be uh, spicy a little bit in the middle with these kind of dancing modulation here and there, but um, in the end the track is just kind of dull and doesn't really go anywhere. That's kind of the, the same rhythm and routine of a lot of songs this week, honestly, but... With that, we will move into the meh category songs I thought were pretty meh. Uh, we've got Bose and XYSM with Bella Chow. Uh, yeah, Bose has been on this kind of big room trend as of late, and I just don't get it. Uh, this song in particular is a two minutes on the dot track and offers little in the grand scheme of the music industry. Um, there's a nice kind of lullaby-esque string section, which I think lands this in meh, not bad, but um, the drops are kind of typical main stage festival bait, I must say. We got Tiesto, uh, Goldshire, I want to say, and Irina Rhymes with Dudu, Dudada, Dudada, I think is how you say it. Uh, yeah, speaking of main stage, this is kind of another short main stage song with a big sound, but little else to it. I don't really think it's egregiously bad in any capacity. I just think it's incredibly boring and doesn't really bring a ton of energy that a song like this needs to typically. Uh, so. Then we got Figure and Dak Daniels with House of a Thousand Corpses from the new Monsters Undead LP album out now by Figure. And um, yeah, this is a no-nonsense, abrasive, heavy, metallicized dubstep that's uh, a lot to handle personally from me. Uh, this is the kind of classic Figure Halloween album that gets released, uh, or October Spooky Month album. And I think this track in particular is produced well, but I'm just struggling to get behind the writing and storytelling. Then we got Tynan with Frogs on Acid from the new Frogs and stuff, kind of A-B double-sided single. And of all the kind of double-sided singles Tynan has been pumping out, or I guess short kind of three-track EPs, um, this is probably my least favorite, I will say. This track in particular doesn't, or do, I would say does a really good job of embodying the idea of Frogs on Acid. Um, but I just don't think that sound in particular is naturally pleasing, or an intriguing sound at least to me. So um, I think he nailed it on the head with the sound design, but I just didn't resonate with it a ton. Then we got Keys and Crates and Remarkable with People Are Dancing, a simple disco house tune with a constant groove and party atmosphere, and that is about it. It is made to just groove and be simple and just be played in the background. Um, it is not meant to uh, wow in any capacity, this song. Then we got Armin Van Buren and Vinny Vici featuring Anna Timfoe, Timofe, I want to say, with uh, Sarah Bain. I'm butchering all these, I know, I always do, but this is a grand operatic tune that does start a little suddenly, I will say, almost as if you're walking into an opera, like, mid-performance. It feels a little weird when you first hit play, but um, otherwise, it's a kind of big room techno cut that's playing off the techno trends of 2024, and it's okay, I just don't think it's overly fantastic.
Then we got Pauline Her with Bleeding Out. Uh, there are definitely some more trap, kind of heavy instrumentation here with the hi-hats and percussion, but otherwise this is a main stage house track with a commanding 4 and the 4 beat, um, almost leaning into that kind of future rave sound a bit that gets a little bit more intense and a little bit more trance-like in some areas, but uh, not too bad. Then we've got Caribou with Got to Change from the new Honey LP, the new Honey album out now by Caribou. And this, in fact, this song here, uh, Got to Change, is the album closer. And I do think it plays a great job in the grand scheme of the track list as being the album closer. But indiv individually, I think the track is kind of just fine. Uh, it's a more kind of electro, indie-driven house cut that feels like it's constantly building and building and building. And does have, I would say, a, a very, like, kind of peaceful resolution. But um, yeah, individually, I thought the track was just meh. Then we've got G-Rex, Stucca, and Ice Cold Bishop with Foul, an absolutely crushing uh, trap production here all throughout uh, with uh, kind of these um, less than great vocals, I will say. I don't love them from Ice Cold Bishop here. Um, I do think the production, though, is very, like, fantastic and dense and compressed on these drops a ton. I just, I just think the vocals just kind of pull me out of it. I don't know why. I don't really like them a lot. Uh, not at all, actually. I think if this was just an instrumental track, I would enjoy it a lot more. Then we got Water Flame with Style Wave, a digital sounding electro house tune, uh, another one that fits great within the kind of ecosystem that is Chompo. But again, another one that I've issued and had a little struggles with the Chompo is that it just sounds kind of like a Tokyo Machine style song. Um, they have their kind of uh, typical sound down pat, but kind of want something that's a little bit more different, I would say, and I didn't feel that a ton with this one in particular. But then we're moving into the good category songs I thought were pretty good. Uh, we've got the Tales remix of Baby Sweet by In Touch. Uh, this is a light trap remix that's meant for easy listening sessions. Um, tonally, it's very much on the same wavelength as the original with just a little bit less of the kind of percussion, more garage sounding instrumentation. Then we've got Complexive with Feel You, a kind of more lesser known artist that I want to highlight here. Um, this track prefaces as this kind of more simplistic future bass, almost house leaning tune with a groovy keyboard solo in the midsection, which reminds me a lot of like a Haywire or Oblivion's type sound. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a highlight of the track, that midsection. Otherwise, the kind of big movements uh, feel pretty linear throughout. So I do love that midsection a ton. They've got Oliver Heldens and Roro with Shine. It's a nice and breezy kind of stutter house track with bright lyricism and a simple beat. Um, nothing overly incredible or complex, but just a, a nice tune from Oliver Heldens here, I will say. Then we've got Party Favor with Rinse, Repeat. Uh, yeah, Party Favor is starting to kind of take these more like dense, this like dense trap cut that's got these kind of big constant bass lines and repetitive vocal chops. Um, again, a track that feels fairly simple in execution and, to and tone, um, but one that I do think works great in the grand scheme of um, putting it on and just kind of groove into it. Then we got Jai Wolf with Heaven is Calling, a very nice and pleasing progressive house tune with a lot of energy and drive, um, keeping the whole tune kind of very moving all throughout. Like it just kind of goes and goes and goes and goes and gives, um, almost as like similar to the way like a Speed House song does without being Speed House and being more progressive. So uh, yeah, that's that. Then we got the Nicky Romero remix of Free, originally by Calvin Harris and Ellie Goulding. I'm actually quite impressed with this new Nicky Romero remix. I think it gives this kind of, uh, this track a sense of like uh, the early 2010s commercial house, or nowadays it's kind of labeled as festival progressive house. Um, the kind of, a bit of a nostalgia with the big lead synth melodies and long lead-ins. And reminds me a lot of the early kind of days of me getting into EDM, and I uh, really enjoyed it. Then we've got Gyro Field with Dyric, Dyric Rhythm, I want to say, uh, from the New Energy Volume 2 compilation. Uh, this is a dense atmospheric drum and bass track with an eerie tone and um, kind of distressing atmosphere all throughout. Um, I do love the like longer cut here at five plus minutes and how intricate the sound design is at some point. So uh, pretty nice one from Gyro Field here. Then we've got Elohim with Patience, a creepy mid-tempo, very bass-centric track from Elohim here with harrowing production elements and an intense atmosphere that feels very uh, ripe and ready for the spooky Halloween season now that we're in October. Then we've got Virtual Riot with Believe What You Want, another single from the upcoming record from Virtual Riot. And uh, while I do think there are some great moments and production throughout, it is kind of more or less your typical Virtual Riot dubstep tune. I will say the midsection is playful and entertaining, but the drops are more or less the kind of standardized dubstep sound that we've uh, kind of come to know and love from Virtual Riot. So it's good, uh, just I know it can be a little bit more sometimes. 
And in a surprise twist of fate, we have BB No Money with two from the kind of two AB single here. And two was the one that I wanted to emphasize or talk about in particular because I liked it more than the other track was, which was a lot more popular. But um, yeah, the surprise entry on this list, but this is straight up EDM. Uh, when you think of BB No, BB no Money, you think of this kind of um, hip hop rap style, but this is straight up um, hip house with actually a strong fidget backing, uh, very reminiscent of uh, Guess that we heard from uh, Charlie XCX. Um, yeah, the lyricism is great. The hook is catchy and overall, I just think it's a fantastic tune and I love the kind of blending together of different genres uh, like BB No Money did here. So way to go. Then we've got Conroe with Somebody With You. Love how this track starts. It uh, reminds me a lot of Conroe's earliest tracks in his career, and he kind of comes out of the gate large and in charge and establishing that kind of um, bass line instrumentation here in particular. Not the actual like bass line, but the actual bass uh, instrument and the uh, falsetto vocals that we come to know and love from Conroe. And it kind of has those like really groovy, almost Ellis-style synth hits all throughout uh, in the back end that I really, really resonated with. So enjoyed that one a ton. Then we've got Must Die with Kick Back. Uh, Must Die's best song in a long time. It is a more screechy trap cut with stuttering synths at times and piercing melodies at others. Uh, this is kind of a festival trap sound that is fairly new territory for Must Die, but uh, a new territory that might actually foster some of his best material yet. And I'm really excited to see if there's more of this uh, tone and style from Must Die because this is pretty fantastic. And finally, my number one track of the week is Cloud Nun and Direct with Back From Dust. Another future garage uh, collaboration from these two with a drowning synth sustain to kind of keep the atmosphere a little bit more uh, on the darker side of things. Well, that is kind of underneath some killer vocal chops, as is always from Cloud Nun and Direct. Um, the big, there's kind of big synth modulation on the pre-drops that reminds me a lot of early 2010s Direct um, with a kind of liquid dubstep sound and has hints of his, in particular, older and newer styles kind of intertwined together. So this was a great tune that I loved a ton. But uh, that was been this week in EDM. Let me know what you think of any all any and all songs in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.